what would you do with an innovation and research funding of 100 billion euros? The question is key to the EU project called Horizon Europe. It succeeds the Horizon 2020 program and, that much is clear, human biomonitoring will play an important part in it. Let's get an update on this new research program from our next speaker. She's the head of the Healthy Lives Unit at the European Commission's Directorate General for Research and Innovation. The unit strives to identify and study all health determinants, which could be environmental, related to the climate, chemical, food-related, job or lifestyle-related. She joined the European Commission as early as 1994 to work on research funding in genomics. Please welcome Dr. Anna Lönnroth. Well, many thanks to you. I hope you can hear me. Yes. So, um, oh, excellent. So first of all, uh, it's really great honor and privilege to be here today to address to you uh, the uh, contribution here from the European Commission. Uh, so I'd like first to take the opportunity to thank the organizers, the German Environment Agency and the Federal Ministry for Environment, Nature Conservation and Nuclear Safety for the excellent organization despite these uh, challenging times. I know we have technical uh, hiccups this morning, but I think we are doing, or you are doing a fantastic job nevertheless. So um, talking about COVID uh, actually and the impact, it's immense as we all know. And, and what I, before I go into what, my, what I'd really like to say, I'd just say that we have a recovery a process in front of you and it's absolutely essential that this recovery takes place in a green and sustainable way. So this is really the first point. Um, but just, uh, I've heard a lot said this morning uh, that allows me to go rather quickly uh, over some of my first slides. Uh, but just to say uh, that the policy framework for um, the, our actions is really, first of all, the Sustainable Development Goal. These are, are the overarching um, uh, uh, objectives. And then we have our President von der Leyen's a union that strives for more. She has a number of high priorities in there. At the top of the list, we have the European Green Deal. We heard about it already. I will uh, talk to you more about it, and we probably hear a lot more about it later on today. So this is very important. Uh, it's a fantastic tool uh, which is new to, to us. And, and not to forget, though, that Horizon Europe, our next uh, framework program for research and innovation, is really going to be a very practical, hands-on tool to actually implement and put in motion the processes needed for us to be able to shape future policies. So um, what um, what about the Green Deal then? Um, I'm glad to say, you know, in interest of time, I don't need to repeat this because it's already been mentioned several times, but I just he uh, highlight here perhaps the most relevant aspects in this package for this audience here today, which would be then the farm to fork strategy and the biodiversity strategy, both of which are already there since May uh, this year. And now the next on the agenda is really, really important, which is towards a zero pollution ambition for toxic free environment with the chemical strategy for sustainability. And this we can foresee to be adopted really very soon. But let's take a closer look at Horizon Europe. So this is now developed uh, in, in a way that really reflects the new mindset of the commission and, and Horizon Europe, I would like to emphasize, will definitely keep the, um, the, uh, the notion of excellence as a fundamental pillar. We're not going to deviate from that. But having said that, though, achieving impact is becoming more important. Research and innovation actions should help us to achieve our policy goals and help solve the underlying problems and propose new ways of doing things. So what we can call here, the, let's say, intervention logic is to along the, let's say, project output, output the broader outcomes of the, at the level of perhaps a, a project portfolio, if you like, and then the longer term societal impacts. And in order to achieve this closer link to policy ambitions, we have put in motion something we call co-creation of the whole Horizon Europe program. I'm about, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, that later. We're also building on lessons learned 
And one of the requests expressed very clearly by the member states was to be more coordinated in our approach by building large scale initiatives that also involve uh, the, part of the member states themselves. So therefore, we have as many as 49 partnerships uh, put on the table and five missions. So these partnerships range from anything which are looser constructions, the sort of co-program through co-funded uh, partnerships, which are a little bit uh, more of uh, an ambitious level of cooperation to institutionalized, which is really tight uh, um, collaborations. They need to be ambitious and bring together the required scope and scale to deliver on the global challenges and to modernize industry. And they're really going beyond Horizon 2020 and their level of ambition. The five missions, this is something really new. Uh, they are targeted on really delivering in a, a, a ta delivering tangible outcomes in, in a limited time. And they are uh, focused on cancer, adaptation to climate change, healthy oceans, seas, coastal and, and inland waters, climate neutral and smart cities, and soil health and foods. So and all of these, as you can hear, have relevance to uh, what we're talking about here in this conference. So, um, how about this co-creation that I mentioned? Uh, looks take, let's take a look uh, at that a bit more closely. Uh, we have developed a close collaboration with the other services, the DGs of the European Commission. We're jointly drafting the work programs, but we're also striving for better synergies with other programs in the Commission. So this is something entirely new. Uh, for example, we have ongoing work also to see how structural funds could possibly be used as co-funding mechanisms for Horizon Europe uh, when co-funding is required. And we also set up closer dialogue with member states and stakeholders. We work, for example, not only with the research ministries, but also with health ministries increasingly. And we engage across the various ministries in the member states. We're at the beginning of this process, but we are we're aiming to enlarge that activity. And countries have been requested now to flag their formal commitment on all these partnerships by the 15th of October. Now we'll see really what we're talking about uh, uh, hands on. So finally, we're also engaging very closely with the citizens through, for example, public consultations. We've had several of those. Um, the latest one else on the strategic plan and that closed on the 18th of September. We also recently organized uh, for the second time ever the annual research and innovation days where the public was con consulted on the expected impacts in our key performance indicators. So we're testing the waters by issuing actually already in the last year of Horizon 2020, where we're still in this program, a dedicated call of almost 1 billion euros to show how serious we are about the Green Deal. So this is a really first test call under Horizon 2020. And the general objective is, is really to deliver tangible and visible results relatively quickly and show how research and innovation can provide concrete solutions for the Green Deal main priorities. So it's written really following the Horizon Euro spirit, uh, the first test case, as I said. And perhaps for this audience here today, particularly two topics under the area eight in the package. The support to zero pollution area would be, I think, of very much interest. And from what I heard already this morning, I think it would be very interesting for you. Um, uh, these topics are first innovative systemic zero pollution solutions prote to protect health, environment, and natural resources from persistent and mobile chemicals. This includes, for example, the PFAS. And then we have the second topic, which is fostering regulatory science to address combined exposures to industrial chemicals and pharmaceuticals from science to evidence-based policies. And here we're talking about mixtures that we heard a lot about already this morning. So these two topics we believe are both timely and important, and they will be very tangible hands-on opportunities to move some uh, things forward here. So it's foreseen um, that uh, the call has actually just been published, I would say, in, uh, in mid-September, and um, the deadline will happen, uh, will take place at the end of January next year. So we're moving fast here. So we've foreseen that these projects can start quite quickly. 
So this is, I think, a very concrete uh, and very positive move forward that, and also shows that we are very serious uh, by walking the talk, if you like. So let's come back to Horizon Europe, the next program. Um, so what areas should you look out for in Horizon Europe for research related to chemicals? Well, there, first of all, the three pillars of Horizon in Europe. We're talking about excellent science that includes the European Research Council, uh, the Marie uh, Sklodowska QD actions and research infrastructures. We're talking about uh, the global challenges and in European industrial competitiveness in Pillar 2. This is what I projected here on the slide. And we're talking about innovation in Europe, support to innovation in industries through the European Innovation Council and the EIT. So if we take a closer look at the second pillar here that I mentioned, we have health, obviously first impact on health and monitoring, but we also have industry, innovation in, in production, safe, sustainable, circular, was also already mentioned. Um, and then we have the environmental health and monitoring, fighting pollution, food safety with bio-based products and, and circular systems. But what I'm really here to talk about to you today is the advanced um, planning for our next partnership on a chemical risk assessment that is clearly going to build about uh, build on the very successful human biomonitoring uh, for EU projects. So this next partnership uh, builds on the notion, of course, that we're not there yet, as we heard, of course. Um, discussions clearly point uh, to the fact that the national actors uh, uh, say that risk assessors and managers are confronted with new and recurrent challenges in their work. Uh, an increasing number of chemicals on the market. We heard the numbers already this morning. Uh, many of these challenges also require a lot of innovation in order to tackle them. Time and resources are engaged in needed uh, research for this. And a new partnership under Horizon Europe will offer opportunity to address, address these challenges together at EU and country level. However, this partnership must address the problems risk assessors uh, and managers are faced with. It cannot be only science driven. So therefore, we need, the uh, <clears throat> we need a close collaboration with risk assessors and managers to design the partnership and define the activities. We also need them to ensure uptake of the results those of you having such roles in the audience, let the scientists know what you want, how you will use it and why it maybe didn't work. Listen to the scientist experience. Their knowledge and insights will also drive the innovation. And dear researchers out there, please also engage in the dialogue. Understand that the regulatory framework, risk assessors and managers need to follow, comply with the timelines and need uh, for access to raw data. So in short, Let's set the roadmap together and don't forget to consult all stakeholders who will be impacted by the work to be done. So how do we envisage this new partnership? We build on already existing structures. Uh, first of all, of course, HPM for EU, which is the focus of our meeting today, but also the idea of a European toxicology platform explored by France together with a group of other countries and EU institutions and also joint activities between EU projects and with the uh, services, for example, joint work on mixtures and safe and sustainable by design. We have been working on developing the idea together with member states and colleagues from EU institutions. And I think this uh, sounds pretty much what uh, Marike already discussed uh, this morning. It's not a, a surprise really, because this initiative largely builds on the HBM for EU. So in order to develop the future partnership, a steering group was set up by a call for expression of interest to the uh, Horizon Europe uh, member states representatives in the program committee back in May 2019. So the group met for the first time in um, September 2019 and their next meeting is happening in November this year very soon. I would like here to take the opportunity to thank all the members of this steering group for the enormous work done. So in March 2020, ANSES volunteered to take the coordination and was approved by the steering group. And the group has now produced a concept paper, which is published online. So this work is done in full transparency. You can find all the information on the partnership uh, on, on uh, our website. 
So the partnership is really about carrying out research and innovation activities jointly among the key actors and their scientific networks, doing more and doing better because of an optimized use of resources and expertise, but also to ensure a close link to the relevant actors in order to maximize on the policy impact. This is absolutely crucial. So what is the structure foreseen for this partnership? This is a very busy slide. Apologies for that. And I'll be happy to share the slides afterwards, of course. But basically, I'll take you from, from uh, left to right, from the gray to the yellow. So we start here with the challenges uh, on the left side in the gray zone here. And they give rise to the uh, research and innovation needs in blue. They, in turn, are translated to the objectives for the partnership here depicted in, in green. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, and and um, they will um, uh, contribute to the actions to be undertaken in the partnership, which is in light yellow. Uh, the aim is that the results, the expected outcomes, will contribute to support a different EU strategies linked to the Green Deal, workers' protection, circular economy, and waste treatment. So finally, the expected impact here in white should be at the international level, the EU should really show that it's able to reinforce its position as driver of innovative chemicals in risk assessments. So the uh, partnership is really not about legislation per se. There are other processes for this. It's about research and innovation required to ensure our risk assessors and risk managers have the necessary tools to meet today's challenges. So what are the next steps? Uh, well, prerequisite, of course, is that we have an approval by the member states on Horizon Europe. And that's not yet the case, but we're getting there. Uh, we hope to have the publication of the work program. It's a two-year work program um, early next year. We don't have, we can't give you precise dates because of the, the lack of a formal adoption yet, but we hope we, we will not have a delay there. So um, we foresee early start, hopefully. And thanks to HBM for EU, two open surveys have already been run to prepare this. One on substances for human biomonitoring, already planned, uh, and one on priorities for the new partnership. So the deadline was on 18 September, and the contributions there are being processed. The next important step is to receive the feedback from the member states on their interest in the different partnership proposed for the first work program of Horizon Europe. And as I said, all member states have been asked by our commissioner to provide the reply on their firm commitment by the 15th of October. So we hope that many of you have been actively involved in the national discussions and you're able to, to have, let's say, the open door access to this dialogue. The governance structure is to be set up before the end of the year, taking example of what's been developed for HBM for EU. With ministers, I should say here, this is not a revolution, this is an evolution of HPM for EU. So we'll have the risk managers in the governing board and the agencies, risk assessors as grant signatories. And the full-fledged proposal should be uh, developed before the next spring, before the deadline of the first call, that is. And the challenge now is to work on the HPM legacy, how to ensure a smooth continuity uh, between the two partnerships the current one and the future one, and to take stock of the experiences gained. So another challenge to be discussed today is also the long-term sustainability of human biomonitoring in Europe. This goes, of course, beyond the next partnership. So we foresee a start of the new partnership on 1st of January uh, 2022. This should uh, ensure uh, that there's no gap between uh, HBM for EU and the next one. So there's still work to do. Uh, and before I close, uh, I would really like to thank the whole consortium of the HBM for EU for the absolutely fantastic work that you're doing. Uh, it's really a great pleasure to, to work with you. And I think you're doing a, an amazing contribution for, for EU uh, uh, the, the proving the, the added value of the EU collaboration, in, not only in science, but in all policies that are relevant to this important area. Thank you very much.